Hey, this is Mr. Jarrett, and in this video, we're going to talk about identifying equivalent ratios. Very, very simple concept. So, when you see two ratios, as we're used to seeing them with colons or as fractions, the simplest way to identify whether or not you're dealing with equivalent ratios is very simply to line them up. So, for example, here, 2 to 1 and 14 to 7. And there are three tests. If you can look left and right and see a relationship that goes from one column to the other, or up and down and see a relationship, or if you can cross multiply. So I'm going to show you all three in this case. So I can see here that 1 times 2 gives me 2, and 7 times 2 also gives me 14. That would say that these, these ratios are equivalent. I can also look up and down. So since I see 2 times 7 gives me 14, and 1 times 7 also gives me 7, that again confirms that these are equivalent. A third way that you could have done it was once you have them lined up, if you cross multiply up, 14 times 1 is 14, and 7 times 2 is also 14. So all three ways, because I got the same answer in whichever direction I went, I knew that those were equivalent ratios. So let's look at another one. So 11 to 18, first thing we do, line them up, 2 to 3. When we look at this, we can't really tell what number you multiply 11 by to get 18. And so we can't go that way. We try to go up and down. And that doesn't work either. I try to go up and down. I'm not really sure what number you multiply. So then the last test is to cross multiply. So if I multiply 3 by 11, I got 33 over here. I multiply 2 by 18, I got 36 over here. And so since these are not equal to each other, then these two ratios are not equivalent. 1 to 4 and 2 to 8. Again, I can look and see, well, 1 times 4 does give me 4, and 2 times 4 also gives me 8. That does confirm that they are equivalent. If I go down, 1 times 2 gives me 2, and 4 times 2 gives me 8. So again, they're equivalent. If I cross multiply, 8 times 1 is 8, and 2 times 4 is also 8. So three different pieces of evidence that they're equivalent. I don't have to do all three. I just need to find one. And if I have that evidence for both, then I'm good to go. So let's take a look at 3 to 9 compared to 2 to 6. Once you line them up, again, you can see that in this case, I, I know personally how to go from 3 to 2, or from 2 to 3, actually. And to go from 6 to 9 is the same. But if you can't see that, what you should be able to see is that from 3 to 9 is multiplication by 3. And from 2 to 6 is also multiplication by 3. And so since I do have the same multiplicative factor, then it is equivalent. Also, if I cross multiply, 2 times 9 gives me 18. And 6 times 3 will also give me 18. So again, these are equivalent. So whichever way you can recognize a pattern, that makes it equivalent. So now you're asked, which of the following are equivalent to 14 to 10? So if you can see the relationship, let's say you have 28 to 20, again, you should be getting used now to say, okay, well, if I multiply 14 by 2 and 10 by 2, I get 28 and 20 respectively. So that means that this one is equivalent. If I look at 14 to 10 and 6 to 2, well, if I try to go up from 6 to 14, I can't really see. But I do know that 2 times 5 is 10 and 6 times 5 is not 14. So that means that these two ratios are not equivalent to each other. If I look at 14 to 10 and 3 to 1, 
then again, I look and say, well, I can't tell what three is multiplied by to be 14. I know that one is being multiplied by 10. And so if you multiply three by 10, you do not get 14, you get 30. So again, these are not going to be equivalent. So these two would not be equivalent to 14 to 10, which, and again, if you wanted to provide more confirmation, if you were to cross multiply, three times 10 is 30, and one times 14 is 14. So those, again, do not work because they're not equivalent. And six times 10 is 60, and two times 14 is 28. And again, those are not equivalent. So there's tons of evidence that those two are not equivalent. So let's try it again with seven and four. So starting with seven and four, once you line everything up, if I start with 42 to 24, I look and recognize, okay, let's see. So since seven times six gives me 42 and four times six gives me 24, that means that this one is equivalent. If I do the same thing with 11, well, let's start with seven and four and 11 and one. Well, I look going up, I can see going up that one times four is four, but 11 times four does not give me seven. So again, I can automatically tell that this one is not equivalent. And then I do seven and four and four and seven. And so obviously, since they're inverted, I can use cross multiplication this time. Four times four is 16 but seven times seven is 49. And since I do not get the same answer for both, then this one is not equivalent either. So let's do one more. So we have, which is equivalent to five to 10. So if I start with five to 10, and again, as you notice, I continue to just line them up. And once I line them up, this makes my work very easy. And so here, since I'm looking, I can see that going from left to right, I can see that five times two is 10 and 50 times two is not 25. They have to be going in the same direction. So these two will not be equivalent. Again, I can confirm if I go vertically, five times 10 gives me 50, but 10 times 10 does not give me 25. So that means that these that five to 10 and 50 to 25 is definitely not equivalent. Do the same thing again with five to 10 and six to 12. And so if I look, I go from left to right, five times two is 10 and six times two will also give me 12. So that's evidence that it's equivalent. If I'm still a little iffy, I can always cross multiply. And so since six times 10 is 60 and 12 times five is also 60, that is again evidence that six to 12 is equivalent to five to 10. And then I do the same thing with five to 10 and eight to 16. And so if I look, I know that I'm multiplying by two here five times two is 10 and eight times two also gives me 16 when I go in the same direction. So that's evidence that they are equivalent. And so I can work with that. Also, if I cross multiplied, eight times 10 is 80 and 16 times five is also 80. I couldn't tell what the number was going vertically, but that didn't matter. As long as I had the solid evidence that when I went the same direction, left to right, up or down, or, or if I cross multiplied, I got the same answer. So finally, two to 14 and five to 10. What I will see is if I try to go from left to right, again, that's times two. Well, two times two does not give me 14. That means that this is not equivalent and I can prove it further by cross multiplying, two times 10 is 20, 
and 5 times 14 is not 20, it's actually 70. And again, since they are not equal to each other, again, they are not equivalent. So that would mean that just the second and third ones are equivalent. So that's the entire process. Uh, again, you have three ways to check it. You can, you're always going to line them up. Once you line them up, check it going left and right. Check it going up and down. If you get the same factor that goes from one to another, they're equivalent. If you're not sure, you can always cross multiply. And if you get the same answer, they're also equivalent. And that's all you have to do. So let's get it done. So there is actually one more simple way that you can determine if ratios are equivalent. Uh, you can actually just simplify both of the ratios. And if you get the same simplified result, then you know you have equivalent ratios. So watch how quick this is. Two to one is already simplified. 14 to seven, these can both be divided by seven. And if I divide both of these by seven, 14 divided by seven is two and seven divided by seven is one. And now you can see that they're equivalent. 11 to 18 is already simplified. Two to three is already simplified. And so since these are both already simplified and they're not equal to each other, then they're not equivalent. One to four is already simplified. Two to eight, both of these can be divided by two. When I divide both of these by two, two divided by two is one and eight divided by two is four. So I end up getting the same thing. So these are both equivalent. Three to nine can be both divided by three. Three divided by three is one. Nine divided by three is three. So one to three. Two and six can both be divided by two. Two divided by two is one. And six divided by two is three. Now I see that they're equal to each other. So they are equivalent. 14 and 10. 14 and 10 can both be divided by two. So that's going to be seven to five. 28 and 20 can both be divided by 4. When I divide both of these by 4, 28 divided by 4 is 7, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. So that means that this one, again, is equivalent. 6 to 2, those can both be divided by 2, and this becomes 3 to 1, which, again, is still not equivalent. And 3 to 1, again, is not equivalent. It's already simplified, but it's not 7 to 5. That's why that's the only answer. Seven to four is already simplified. I can divide both 42 and 24 by six. And 42 divided by six is seven. And 24 divided by six is going to give you four. And that's why that one is correct. 11 to one is already simplified. So we know that that is not equivalent. And four to seven is not in the same order as seven to four. So again, that's why that one is not equivalent. 5 to 10 can both be divided by 5, so that's going to be 1 to 2. So if I walk down through these, 50 and 25 can both be divided by 5, and so actually they can both be divided by 25, and so 50 divided by 5 is 2, and 25 divided by 5 is 1, but 1 to 2 is not the same as 2 to 1, so this one is not correct. 6 and 12 can both be divided by 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1, and 12 divided by 6 is 2. And so this one is correct because it's exactly the same. 18 and 16 can both be divided by 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1, and 16 divided by 8 is 2. So this one is correct. And 2 and 14 can both be divided by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. And so 1 to 7 is not the same as 1 to 2. So this one is not correct. So that's another very quick way. Um, if you're good with simplifying fractions and finding a common denominator or a common factor, you can simply do it that way. But if not, you always have the original um, explanation that was given. It's not this out.